Uh, so this is Sammy the Salmon. Uh, a couple things we're going to look for on this fish. We're going to look for some freshness markers on here. If you want to look at his eyes are the first thing we're going to look at. So remember I told you guys about it being uh, not really sunken in. The, the eyes should look fresh. They should look clear. These are a good indicator here. These are really nice little eyes. Uh, the texture of the body should be firm, fleshy, but not mushy. should have a nice moistness to it as well. The gills. The gills are a little dark here. Uh, that's usually not the color that we want. We want it more of this frothy pink color. It's a little dark, so these have probably got about two to three days out of the water. Uh, not that bad, considering. The fins should be nice. They shouldn't be dried out at all. Anyone remember what kind of fin this one is? Which one this one's called? Pectoral. Pectoral fin? Yeah. That's right. Yep. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here at the head. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab the pectoral fin, and I'm going to make a sweeping arc motion. Notice where I've got my blade. Mm -hmm. and I've got it sort of at an angle. And the reason why I've got it at an angle is because I want to get all that meat up in here. I'm just going to come in here, cut that, and now I've reached the backbone. I've reached the backbone in there, and I'm just going to turn my knife. I'm just going to come down here. You hear that cracking sound? Yeah. Coming right through the the bones there, the pin bones. I'm just going to take that guy out. Hmm. One fillet. I'm going to do it the same way here, except I'm coming the opposite direction. Sweeping motion, I'm going to get all that meat up there toward the head. I'm going to pull it back, turn my knife right on the backbone, lift this up. Watch your fingers when you do this. Keep your hands out of the way. Very important. Keep your hands out of the way. Knife should be angled down just slightly. That's a decent yield loss on that. I lost a little more than I would have liked to. But considering it's been a few weeks since I've done this, it's not too bad. What you can do with this in the restaurant industry, you can take a spoon. Because food cost is really important in the restaurant industry. Scrape this meat out. This could be used for an appetizer of some kind, whether you're making a force meat, uh, you're doing a salmon mousseline, maybe you're doing a, um, a salmon risotto. You take this meat, chop it up really nicely, add it in the salmon risotto. So there's a lot of different applications for this kind of meat. Would this be good for stock? No. 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 Fatty oily fish are not good for stock. Thank you. Yeah, I cracked the backbone. Clean your board. Now we've got our fish here, our fillet here. We've got to trim it up just a little bit to make it a little more restaurant quality. I'm going to come underneath this rib cage right there. I'm just shaving, just taking as little of that meat off of there as I possibly can because I want that meat. That's top dollar stuff. I'm going to get here. This isn't going to be very appetizing. I'm going to take that off. And you could still do stuff with this. Uh, the belly like that, I like to cube it up and uh, Take the skin off of it, obviously. Cube it up, and uh, would uh, cornmeal batter that. Serve it as an appetizer, little bites. For Those are really nice for bites. Just gonna clean that a little bit. The worst thing you can do in fabricating fish is hesitate. Once you commit to it, you need to commit wholeheartedly. Don't stop. Saw. Stop. Saw. Stop. Saw. Grab it. Commit. Okay. Remember I, showed, I told you guys in the lecture that I was going to do a little trick here to show you guys how to uh, take the skin off. I go down here and I just get a little bit of it. I pull it back and I'm going to take my knife. I'm just going to make a little incision right there. Right into the skin. And that's going to let me hook it. It's Hold not it going to break? It's not going to break. Salmon skin is really tough and durable. They're actually making leather out of it. Sweet. 
And then once I get enough of it, I'll just kind of choke up on there. And I'm going to wiggle the skin, not so much the knife. Constant pressure forward with the knife and pulling skin back. Well, you can get you all like the meat. Skin. It does. No meat left on that. Shine, there goes the cowboy boots. You <laughs> really can. What you would do is actually you'd take this skin and you'd be able to leather it and then uh, laminate it onto some regular, uh, mm -hmm. regular leather. There goes the cowboy boots. boots. Yeah, Salmon boots. <laughs> you guys never saw Waterworld? So now that we've got our skin fillet, flip it over to look at it. If you need to do any trimming up, this is going to be our non-presentation side. This is going to be the side that's going to be down on the plate, so it's not going to be as bad. <clears throat> I'm going to trim it up just a little bit. And when I do this, I, you notice I am cutting toward myself, but I'm very cautious of where my fingers are. I don't do like when I'm cutting onions or something. I don't I always know where my fingers are in this particular case. Thank you, sir. The bones. Okay. Now we're looking for pin bones. You can see them here. In order to find them, you can just run your finger backward. Run your finger backward in there. Or look for the muscle separations there. Those muscle separations, everywhere you see a muscle separation, there's going to be a pin bone. So we're just going to take it, start at the head of it, pull outward, away. This one's kind of tough. Don't be afraid if you can't get them right off the bat. That's okay. Sometimes you have to dig in there. Don't try and pull them backward. You don't want to pull them like that because you're going to rip the meat. You want to you pull, pull forward. Them pull them straight out. There is one usually right here at the front as well. Look tough. <laughs> Sometimes it's just hard to get a grip on them with these things. Unless you use the pluck and hair, so you just do it. <laughs> Do the Israeli method with the two strings and some serious you know. editing if you don't shut up. <laughs> the they go all the way about halfway down the, the fish. Look like. I think I'm gonna use that other side as the example of this with some real Pin boning calipers. Okay. Now, when we're going to cut this, for a portion size, you could easily cut this straight up and down. You know, see? About a four ounce portion, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's okay. It's okay. Not as pretty as it could be. What we're going to do, we're going to do a cut called a tranche. It's also called a goujonne in French. I'm going to do this. Angle of the knife. Subscribe. You notice that it's going to look like it's going to fill up more of the plate. We've got the same amount of weight, but it looks bigger on the plate. So the next one comes down. Cutting about four to five ounces on this. This one's six ounces. I know because I've been cutting the same for a bit. It's 
Six ounces of salmon is actually a really good portion size. Gotcha. Now you got a choice. Here at the tail, this could be used for horse meat, this could be used for a couple other things, or uh, depending on the quality of the restaurant that you're in, and if you're in a five star, five diamond restaurant, obviously you wouldn't serve this piece like it is. What you could do to it if you're in a family dining restaurant, take it, cut it about three quarters of the way through, fold it under, and you got a nice little piece of it. Okay. 